Welcome back to the Mall Anderson Show. Well, my first guest is a nationally recognized expert on flirting and relationships, and his new book, The Five Flirting Styles, Use the Science of Flirting to Attract the Love You Really Want, just came out last week. His name is Dr. Jeffrey Hall, and he is in the Mall House. Hey, Dr. Hall. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Well, we're excited to have you. We've had so much fun talking about having you on and all about this new book. Now, your book is hot off the press and just released this week. And again, it's called The Five Flirting Styles. Use the science of flirting to attract the love you really want. Now, okay, now tell us how you got involved in researching flirting and flirting styles. I mean, did you grow up always paying attention to people flirting? And this is, (laughs) I mean, was this something that your mother recognized you doing at a young age? (laughs) <laughs> no, I would actually say that my mother would describe me as not doing not. that. Not. <laughs> okay. So you, you were was, the observant uh, No, one. I was a, the typical geeky teenager, for sure. Um, this actually all started because of an amazing research opportunity that I had at USC uh, to work with eHarmony. Oh, okay. And uh, it turned into a research article that went around the globe uh, in 2010, and then uh, it's become a book. Wow. Okay, so does, does it work? Did you, did you use this in your own life? <laughs> no, this is actually not based on <clears throat> my own personal experience. This is based on uh, research that I've done um, on over 10,000 daters all over the world. And what it's based on is this concept that there's not just one way to flirt. We don't, don't all do it the same way. So although there are stories that are about me or people that I know <laughs> in the book, I'm not going to tell you which ones those are. Oh, um, you're going to make us guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are in there, They're, but it's very much about what it means to flirt in a lot of different ways rather than just one way. Okay, so in the book you say there are five different styles of flirting. Can you tell us what they are, and how do we know which one will work for us personally? Exactly. So that's a great question. When we start out thinking about this, the first thing I want to say to your listeners is that you have a chance to find out your own flirting style for free. You don't have to buy the book. Um, You can go to my website. It's called flirtingstyles.com, and there's a link that says take the quiz. And what the quiz is, it will give you your five flirting styles after you take about a three- or five-minute set of questions. And it's based, uh, your results are based on people your same sex and age. So you get to find out what your flirting style is compared to people who are just like you. And from that information, the idea is that you get to figure out basically what you do well or what you don't do well. So the five styles are uh, physical, polite, playful, sincere, and traditional. And each one of these has kind of different relationship outcomes, different ways of communicating attraction, and and different sort of uh, things that you're good at and things that you're bad at. And so what if you're good at all of them? <laughs> I, I, you know, looking over the results, I haven't found anybody that's 100% on every single one of these really? styles. I guess it's possible, yeah. I guess it's possible. And the, and the reason that you wouldn't find somebody that's high in all of them is some of them are not related to one another. So let, let me give you an example. Okay. A, a playful flirt is a playful flirt is someone who flirts for to get something. You know, oh. this is somebody who might flirt in order to close a deal with a client, to get out of a parking ticket, to uh, you know, maybe get a free drink at a bar. They have kind of learned how to flirt in a way that has nothing to do with the relationships. They do it because that it's fun. They do it for its own sake. Ah, On the okay. other hand, you have the polite flirt. And the polite flirting style is someone who is very reserved. Uh, they mind their P's and Q's. They're very careful. And they will only flirt when they're really committed and interested in learning something about someone. And what's fascinating about the polite flirt is that they are so concerned with showing respect is that people can't really see that they're flirting, right? They're uh-huh. being hands-off. They're not being aggressive because they think that, uh, like, if this is a man who was very a polite flirt and he was looking for a woman, he wouldn't be aggressive with her because he thinks, you know what, what, women, what shows women that I really care is that I'm keeping my hands off, I'm showing respect and distance. So these two flirting styles are really quite the opposite, right? It's very rare that you have somebody that's both a polite and a playful flirt at the same time. So as a consequence, people Unless they're bipolar, aren't... right? <laughs> that's true. I guess they have multiple personalities. Uh, so we I should done the multiple personality study. So we yet. need to I'll be aware. We need to be aware of someone that is good at all of them. Then is what you're saying. <laughs> I am saying that I think that there is good reason to say be a little bit of aware of the playful style. So the playful flirts are actually really good at uh, you know dropping pickup lines, getting people to do things, but they've really sort of separated uh, flirting from relationships. And so the playful flirt also does things to make you think that this may be kind of those, you know, prototypical player, right? Uh, they tend to have short-term relationships. Um, they describe their last relationship as a casual fling rather than somebody they've been with. 
Um, they actually like to tease and give people a hard time when they're flirting with someone, and if someone gets their feelings hurt, they don't really mind so much. So the playful style is, is one that, if it's by itself, if a person is only playful and nothing else, then yeah, I think you you got to watch out. Well, if you're just joining me, I'm visiting with Dr. Jeffrey Hall, and we are talking flirting today. And, well, now, do we mention all five already? Not yet. I, I, felt, so, like, I felt like there's still more. <laughs> there are. There are. So let me tell you a little about the other two, the physical okay. and the sincere style. Uh, the physical style is basically what, you, what most people think of when they think of flirting. This is uh, people who are good using their body language, their physicality, their nonverbal behavior in order to communicate uh, attraction, right? Th- these are folks who are really comfortable quickly expressing their romantic interest. And physical flirts tend to have that experience of love at first sight. Ah. Um, They have a very kind of intense uh, chemistry with people when they meet people. And as a consequence, they move through a relationship super fast, right? These are the people who, like a flashpoint, just quickly, quickly, quickly move into a relationship. Uh, Sincere flirts, on the other hand, also like uh, are seeking relationships, but they do so through self-disclosure. They do so through sharing, and they do so through talking about their hopes and dreams and what matters to them. Uh, One of my my favorite little factoids about the uh, sincere flirt is that the only one of the five styles who thinks that intelligence is a sexy quality, right? So (laughs) someone's talking about ideas at a bar, and they're like, oh, wow, you're awesome. (laughs) So the sincere flirt is all based on this idea that I want to know you and who you are before I get to know you intimately or sexually. Okay. All right. So the last one is the traditional flirt. And the traditional flirt is someone who men are the aggressor, women are more passive, men should be chivalrous, women should be damsels in distress, men should open doors, pull out chairs, pay for the check, take control of the situation, and women should hang back. Um, this flirting style is really based on the idea that there are really distinct roles for men and women. And this is kind of a good opportunity to bring up that, you know, this is, uh, this is research that I do on heterosexual people. Uh, I don't have research on gay and lesbian relationships, although I am working on that right now um, from an academic point of view. Um, but that flirting style is very much based on the traditional gender roles for men and women. Wow. Okay. Well, you, I, I kind of have to agree with the opening the doors, and I, I kind of like that shri- chivalrous stuff. Chivalrous. Uh-huh. So you're I can't, more of a traditional flirt yourself, then. I guess I, I might be, you know, because uh-huh. I love, I married a Southern man who uh-huh. is very much a gentleman, and, and it's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's interesting is traditional folks tend to do very well when they're matched, right? So yes. the, the relationship on marriage says that those who have a traditional arrangement in their marriage are just as happy uh, than as people who are more egalitarian, right, where men and women do the same sort of things or even switch kind of roles. But traditional folks can be just as happy with the relationship. The difficulty comes up when one person's traditional and the other one's not. And that sends a lot of confusing messages. Sure. So if a woman expects a man to be very much in control and um, you know, make all the first moves and take kind of control of the situation, but a guy is thinking in his head, you know, I don't want to do that because I don't want to disrespect her or I don't want her to think that I'm, I, I don't think that she could make her own choices or something like that, um, that's not a good situation. It probably will not lead to chemistry. Well, if you're just joining me, I'm visiting with Dr. Jeffrey Hall, who's got a new book out, and it's called The Five Flirting Styles. Use the science of flirting to attract the love you really want. Well, okay, we've all heard the line, I guess he or she wasn't getting my signal, or we have thought someone was sending us one when they weren't. How do we differentiate, you know, which signals are the right ones and when should we use them? Yeah, that's a great question. So, yeah, what you said is absolutely true. My, my research would say that 90% of us have been in both of those situations, either trying to send a message and it didn't get across, or someone else was trying to flirt with us and we didn't see it. Well, the bottom line is that when we think of flirting as being five different things, five distinct styles of communicating attraction, it's no wonder that it's so hard to see, right? It's, it's sure. so difficult to see because we don't know what we're dealing with when we first meet someone. Um, If a person intends to show a a deep sense of uh, connection with you by being reserved and hands-off, how can we think of that as flirting, if that's a polite flirt, while at the same time thinking of someone who's very physical in the sense that they touch us, they, you know, are using more coy smiles and touching their hair. So what's difficult is that uh, I think that the best way to start getting good at being accurate is to start recognizing the flirting styles and know what you're dealing with when you see it in another person. And throughout the book, I offer tons of tips about how top 10 ways, here's how you see a polite flirt. Top 10 ways, here's how you see a playful flirt. And when you can kind of d- decode what people do by their flirting behavior, you can know a lot more about what their intentions are. Cool. Well, you talk about the nine flirting rules to live by. Can you tell us what they are? 
<laughs> yeah, I, the, so the nine flirting rules are <laughs> I know it's a lot. How do you, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Uh, pick your so favorite debate, ones. <laughs> okay, I'll pick, I'll, I'll pick the best ones. Okay. So you already mentioned one of them, which is that if you're going to try to figure out if someone's flirting or not, nonverbal behavior is, is a great way to start. Um, so you, we mentioned a couple already, but also things like laughing and smiling. Touching, of course, is a big one. Uh, crossing one's legs if, if a woman is crosses her legs towards a man. Uh, if a man stands with a more open stance so his arms and legs are not crossed, all of these are signs of openness and interest. Um, another rule is men misperceive women, um, how interested they are, and it's one of the strongest findings in courtship literature. Um, is that men are just terrible at perceiving whether or not women are interested or not because they assume everybody, all women are more interested than they really are. Um, <laughs> another rule is that men are much more readable than women are because that they're uh, afraid that they're not going to get their message across clearly, so they're trying a lot harder. While women, interestingly, when they are interested, oftentimes pretend that they're not interested intentionally <laughs> yes. so that they won't potentially be let down, right? So a guy who's interested, there's really nothing to gain by pretending he's not really interested right. um, comparatively. But for women, if they're interested, they're like, whoa, whoa, I'm really attracted to this guy. I should probably uh, hide that a little bit, making it very difficult to decode what women really mean when they're flirting. Interesting. Well, now, is there one thing you could tell some of my listeners, especially the females, is there a dangerous flirt? Well, we've kind of talked about the, the playful flirt a little right. bit, but you know, I would I would say two two things on that. Um, the one thing I'd say is that when when men are pursuant to the point at which that they're trying to do things like uh, isolate you or remove you from the group of friends that you've come with, and I'm imagining like a scene like at a bar or a club or some sort of social engagement, if a man is is picking on you relentlessly and like giving you a hard time because that you're not taking it well, oh come on, I was just joking, you know, whatever. Um, if a man is actually trying to encourage you to sort of um, – is so pursuant of you that he's trying to compete with other guys that are there, even if guys you've came with. Like I know women find it very frustrating when a guy is trying to hit on them when they have a wedding ring on and, um, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Those behaviors are, are actually good telltale signs that this is probably not a good guy, so you need to be careful. Um, the second I'd add is this. One of the big messages with this book is that I'm really trying to get people past the idea that they need to go to a bar or club to find somebody. Good. Um, I agree with yeah. that. I agree We've with gotta that. You've got to get past this. In the last 10 years, here, here's a statistic for you, Mole, you can take with you. In the last 10 years of Americans who got married, Americans who got married in the last 10 years, less than 7% of them met their husband or wife at a bar or club. Less than seven. Interesting. So this is flirting for the rest of us. 93% of us met us, uh, must partners through other places. And we've got to think, you know what? Those people got married. They were flirting. They were flirting at school. They were flirting at the, at the job. They were flirting when they met through friends. They were flirting online. And all of these different ways of flirting means that you're trying to pursue a relationship that's not the bar club relationship. It's something else. And a lot of times those relationships are, are built to last. Well, and sometimes you just never know. You might meet someone in a bar, and it doesn't mean it's not relationship material. It could be two great people just happen to show up at a bar, right? That's right. It can happen. And I'm not, yeah, I don't want to say that it, it can't happen. It's that I'm trying to break the stereotype that everybody says that that's the only place to go. Right? No, well, I love, and, my husband yeah. and I, we were we were set up together by a good mutual friend. Oh, cool. Which cool. to me is awesome, because then you've got lots of information, you know? Yeah, you do. We actually, my, my wife and I actually introduced some friends as well, and they got married. It was kind of a moment of pride for us as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, well I, I tell you, I love this idea. I love what you're doing. I, I think it's great that people can go online and take the test and figure out who they are. The book is called The Five Flirting Styles. Use the science of flirting to attract the love you really want. And it's Dr. Jeffrey Hall. And Dr. Jeffrey Hall, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been my pleasure. Thank you. Well, please come back and we'll talk some more flirting. I would love to. All right. Take care. Up next, Tara Hitchcock from TaraOnTV.com joins me to discuss the Oscars, the VMAs, and so much more. Stay right here on The Mall Anderson Show.